Welcome back to another Roblox Studio tutorial. In today's video, I'm going to show you how you can send a message through the chat system whenever a player completes a part of the obby. So for example, let's go ahead and say this first red part is the end of level 1 for my obby. Whenever the player touches this part, it's going to say the user's name has completed level 1. And then let's say level 2 is this red part over here. Whenever the player touches this part, then it will say something very similar. The username has completed level 2. Alright, so let's go ahead and see how we can do this in Roblox Studio. All right, so what we're going to do first is we're going to find whatever part is going to be the end of the level for your obby. You're going to go ahead and click on it and then find it over here in the Explorer menu. And what you want to do is rename it to something like Level 1 or whatever other way you're going to be naming your different sections of the obby. After that, you want to go down to Replicated Storage and click on the plus sign. Here, we're going to be adding a remote event. After that, we're going to go back to the end of our first level and add a script to it. We're going to start off the script by saying Local and then Level Part is going to be equal to script dot parent. Next we're going to create a variable for the replicated storage and also for the remote event and we're going to do that by saying local replicated storage and this is going to be equal to game colon get service inside the parentheses we're going to put replicated storage next we're going to say local remote event and this is going to be equal to replicated storage, which is where it's located. And then we're going to say colon, and then wait for child. Inside the parentheses, we're going to put remote event. These two right here, this one, and this one here, these are just variable names. So if you want to shorten those up, you're welcome to. Just remember, anytime we reference them in the script, you have to put whatever you chose instead. Next, we're going to create a function that's going to run whenever this part is touched. We're going to start that out by saying local function. The name of our function can be something like complete. Inside the parentheses, we're going to pass the parameter other part, which is whatever other object touches the part. Inside the function, we're going to start off by saying local humanoid is equal to other part dot parent colon find first child. Inside the parentheses, we're going to put humanoid. What this line right here is doing, it's checking to see that whatever other object touches our part, this one right here, is checking to make sure that it has a humanoid part, which would mean it's a player. After that, we're going to say if humanoid. So if it's able to find the humanoid part, the next thing we're going to do is find the player under game.players, and we're going to do that by saying local player is going to be equal to game.players, and then we're going to say colon find first child and what we're looking for under game.players is other part dot parent which is the player's model and then from that model we want to look for the name next we're gonna say if player so just like before if it was able to find the player then what we're gonna do is we're gonna say remote event colon fire client the first thing we need to put inside the parentheses is which client and that's gonna be player and then after that, we're also going to pass the player's name. So we'll say player.name. And finally, down here at the bottom, we're going to connect this function to the touch event for the part by saying level part dot touched colon connect. And then the name of our function is complete. So the way we have the script right now, it's not going to work perfectly. But I want to leave it like this for now. That way you can see what the result is and you'll understand why we have to add stuff later on. For now, though, we're just going to leave it like that. The next thing we're going to do is go down a little bit under the starter player and find the starter player scripts and click on the plus sign. Here we're going to be adding a local script. Inside this local script is how we're going to be sending the message through the chat system. And we're going to start by referencing the replicated storage and also the remote event. And since those two lines are the same, what I'm going to do is just hop over to this script and copy them. And then paste them in the local script. The next thing we're going to do is say local text color. And this is going to be equal to brick color dot new. Inside here will be the color of your text. I'm going to choose lime green, but you can choose whatever you want to. Next, we're going to be defining a function that's going to run whenever that remote event gets triggered. So we're going to start by saying local function. The name of our function can be the same as before. 
inside the parentheses, we're going to put player name. So the value of this parameter here is going to be sent to us from this other script where we included player.name. So player name will be the player's name. Inside the function, we're going to start by saying game dot starter GUI colon set core. Inside the parentheses, we're going to start by saying chat and then make system message. And then we're going to put a comma and curly brackets. While your mouse is still inside the curly brackets, go ahead and press enter a few times. Inside the curly brackets, we're going to be defining some of the properties of the message. The first one is going to be the text. So we're going to say text is going to be equal to player name. And then we're going to be joining this with the message completed. And I'm going to put a space on each side. And I forgot that we need one more parameter, so we're going to head back to this script real quick. And next to player.name, we're also going to include the parts name. And we're going to do that by saying level part.name. So this is where renaming the part is important. So whatever you name your part is what's going to appear right here. Now that we included that, let's go ahead and head back to the local script. And next to player name, we're going to do a comma, and then we're going to say part name. So this is the player's name, which comes from this right here. And then this extra parameter that we added, part name, is going to come from this part right here. Okay, so we're going to say player name. We're going to join that with the word completed. And then we're going to add on to the end of that, part name. At the end of this line, we need to put a semicolon. Next, we're going to define the font. And we're going to do that by saying font is equal to enum.font and then from the font list we're going to choose our font the default is this one right here next we're going to define its color by saying color is equal to text color dot color so this takes the brick color that we defined up here and converts it into a color for the text and then we need a semicolon for this line right here and then I'm going to add one up here since I forgot after the color, we're going to set the font size. So we're going to say font size is equal to enum dot font size. And then from the list here, you're going to choose whatever size you want to, but the default is 24. And finally, down here at the bottom, we want to run this function whenever the remote event gets triggered. So we're going to say remote event dot on client event. And then we're going to say colon connect. And then inside the parentheses, we're going to put the function's name, which is complete. And it seems like I always forget to add the semicolon, so before we run the game, let's go ahead and add the last one right here. Now let's go ahead and check out the game and make sure everything's working. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to have my player go over to the first red part. And you can see that it kind of worked, but it spammed a bunch of the same message inside the chat system. And this was the problem that I was talking about earlier, so let's go ahead and see how we're going to fix this. So what we need to do is come up with a way to see if a player has already completed this level. And if they have already completed the level, then we won't redo that message. So what I'm going to do is show you one way to do this, but feel free to come up with your own ideas. So what I'm going to do under the statement that says if player then, is I'm going to give this player a boolean value whenever they touch this part. And then what I'll do is I'll check to see if that player has the boolean value before I send the message. So I'm going to do that by saying local complete tag is equal to instance dot new this is going to be a bool value and if you don't know a boolean value is just a value that can be either true or false next we're going to say complete tag dot name is equal to level one so I'm going to do level underscore one after that I'm going to say complete tag dot value is equal to true and then I'm going to give it to the player by saying complete tag dot parent is equal to player. Next, to check to see if the player has the tag, what I'm going to do is right under this line, I'm going to say local complete tag is equal to player colon find first child. And then inside the parentheses, I'm going to put what I'm looking for. So in this case, I'm going to be looking for something called level one. 
So I'm going to put quotation marks and then level underscore one. Down here for this statement, I'm going to say if player and not complete tag. So if it's not able to find the complete tag, then I'm going to go ahead and give the player one and send the message. If it is able to find the complete tag, then this section right here won't run and we won't get those duplicate messages. All right, so let's go ahead and check out our code now and see if it fixes the issue. Okay, so let's go ahead and have my player go over to the same part. And now you can see that it only showed up one time. And even if I touch this part again and again, it doesn't repeat the message. And I can show you where that complete tag went by going under players and then the player model. And you can see level one is a tag that's stored inside the player. So let me go ahead and show you how you can set this up for another level. So let's say this part right here is the end of level two. Then if I want to make it say the message for level two, then what I can do is copy the script from level one. So I'll just press control C and then you can right click on the next one and then press paste into. And then inside the script, there's just a few changes we have to make. So here we're going to be looking for a level two tag and then we have to change it right here as well. But that's all you have to change. So now if I run the code, I can show you that it works for both. All right, so I'm going to have my player go through the first level and I see the message completed level one. And then if I touch the second one, it says my username has completed level two. And then if you have more levels than this, then you can just follow the same process for all your levels. All right, so that's going to be the end of the video. I hope you enjoyed and stay tuned for the next one.